Hi, I'm Andrew Connell. All right, now what about creating projects for SharePoint Online? Well, this part of the video is going to get start is where things are going to get a little outdated um, because as Microsoft releases new versions of the SharePoint framework, we're going to see the numbers here that I'm going to use are going to be a little bit different. Specifically, it's probably going to be the, the most things that are going to change here is the version of the SharePoint framework and also the version of Node that we're installing because we want to use the latest and greatest of what's been provided to us um, by Microsoft. Well, again, just to recap, we have two versions of Node that are installed, version 6 and version 8. Um, the next thing we want to install is at the time of the recording, the current of, uh, production, like generally available release of the SharePoint framework is 1.13.1. That supports or is supported, supports running Node V14. So that code name is LTS Fermium. So let's go ahead and install a version of Node for working with SharePoint Framework 1.13. So I'll say NVM install LTS Fermium. That'll install fairly quickly. There we go. And now I can go install everything else that we need. So I'll just say NPM install, we'll use that one. Um, I do know that we do need Gulp V4 uh, for uh, 1.13, that's in the release notes. Uh, and then I'll also just say instead, and this is the part where you can get a little like, you can get a little cute with this. Um, you, there are aliases for each of the packages that you can use as well. So I know that if I choose latest, that's going to give me the most current production release, uh, generally available release of the SharePoint framework that's been released. So the only thing you got to be careful here is that, okay, do I have the right version of Node installed? Do I have the right version of Yeoman installed? Just check the release notes and make sure it's cool. So. I'm going to go ahead and install the latest release of the SharePoint framework here, and we'll let all of this stuff complete. Cool. Everything is now good. We've got everything installed. Um, just as a footnote here, if you ever are installing uh, stuff with um, anything, any NPM package, and let's see if I can get back up here a little bit. There. And you start to see things like little errors that pop up here about no receipt for um, com.apple.package. This isn't that important. Uh, you can ignore this. There's just a, um, these are the command line tools uh, for um, Xcode that have to be installed on my macOS version. Uh, these are not, this is not a big deal. Um, it's just a, um, think about it like if you're on Windows, it's like the C++ redistributable stuff. I just don't have those installed right now or I've upgraded my version of macOS since I last installed them so they need to be updated. It's not a big deal. Okay, now the cool thing here, now we got this, we got our, our SharePoint Online environment set up for uh, doing SharePoint framework development. A uh, couple more things, we can create a few more aliases. So I will say um, NVM alias, uh, we want, which one do we just install? We just installed, oh, we better back up, I'm gonna forget this. So let's say NVM ls 14.18.2. So NVM alias, uh, we did SPFX 1.18. 1.13.1 for SP or for, for V14.18.2. And we did, and this was for SharePoint Online. So I'll do SPFX SPO. Cool. And we'll do NVM LS. And again, this is great because now I'm still don't have to keep track of what version do I have installed, what's available to me. I've got Two things right here, SPFX, uh, or SharePoint 2016, SharePoint 2019, and SharePoint Online. But wouldn't it be cool if we could do one more? You bet. Let's see how to do this and set up a beta environment or an environment we can use for testing some of the SharePoint framework beta deployments. So if I did an NPM info at Microsoft slash generator dash SharePoint, what I'm gonna see when this comes back is it's gonna tell me that the latest version of the SharePoint framework generator that's available to me is 1.13.1. That's the generally available version. But I can see here that they have a beta version that's also available that they're working on. So 1.14.0 beta 4. Let's install a beta environment. Now, if I go read the release notes for this, I know that this thing is only supported up to uh, Node v14. Well, that can be a bit of a challenge because now, if I just saw a second ago where I did an NVM LS, you saw where I was using, I installed Fermium, but Fermium points to 14.18.2, which we clearly already have installed. 
I can't use the same for the same thing. So what I have to do is find another version that I can use. So I know that there's one version less that I can go to. Instead of getting a the list right now, I could do NVM LS uh, remote or dash remote. And that would give me a list of all the different node versions that are available to install. It takes a second to get all those though. So I'm gonna just speed things along and I'm gonna say NVM install v14.18.1. So I'm gonna go one version back. Generally, that's just finding another version that's available to me that's pretty close to the current one. It's close enough. So now that that's installed, let's now do the same thing. We gotta say npm install, and we want the same stuff, except this time, instead of saying latest, I'm gonna say I want next. And I'm gonna let it go through and install all the stuff that it needs for my project or for creating projects uh, right now. But this is using the most recent beta that's available for the SharePoint framework. Now that we have our beta environment all set up, I'm now going to say NVM alias. Um, I know that we created the one we created was 14.18.1. I'm now going to call this one. The alias we have here is 14.0-beta.4. And then I'm going to do the same thing that we've done in the past, but I'm going to make it easier to figure out what this is by saying SPFX SPFX beta, like that. And so now what I have, if I do NVM LS, I now have a developer environment that can create projects for SharePoint Online using the latest version of SharePoint Framework. I can do it for SharePoint 2016 um, to create 1.1 versions of, of my projects. I can do it for 2019 and I can do it for SharePoint SE as well, which means I can do all the different possible SharePoint uh, deployment options and create all these different projects. Um, and the cool thing is it's all on one machine. I'm able to do that primarily because I'm using the tool NVM to manage different node versions um, that are out there. Not sure what NVM is, go Google it up or uh, come over to my blog. Uh, I've got a note, I'll put a link here in the notes of the video uh, where I've written about it and show you how great this tool is and makes your life so much easier. Now let's see how to create a SharePoint developer environment in Windows for SharePoint Online. And this is gonna be using the latest and greatest version of the SharePoint framework. All the same stuff still applies that you just saw in the Mac OS version. We're using SharePoint framework 1.13. So again, we're gonna need a version of uh, Node version 14 to install. So we know that we were using on the last, on our Mac OS version, 14.18.2 is available. So I'll say NVM install 14.18.2. We will then switch over to using that version we just installed. So NVM use 14.18.2. And now let's go install everything that we need to install. NPM install at gulp or gulp CLI at 2.3.0. Yeoman at version four. We do know we need that for the SharePoint framework 1.13.1. And then we need Microsoft generator SharePoint at latest. I'm going to go ahead and let everything install here uh, and I'll save you the time for watching NPM go crazy. Cool. So now you can see that we've got our environment is all set up for working with SharePoint Online now and using the latest version of the SharePoint framework. And again, we can prove that by going back to our folder where we can create our projects or create a new folder for this. So this will be SPFX-SPO, CD SPFX SPO, and we will do yo at Microsoft slash SharePoint, skip install. And we'll be able to see that we're definitely running with the latest version of the SharePoint framework because we can see we're 1.13.1. Um, so I don't need to go about creating a project here. That's pretty self-explanatory that we've got that up and running and that our generator is working. Now let's see how we can set up SharePoint framework uh, development for working with SharePoint Online and specifically a beta version of the SharePoint framework. So again, we're gonna install, uh, we'll double check and just see a list of everything we have installed here. We know that 14.18.1 is available because we use that on Mac OS. So I'll say NVM install 14.18.1. And we'll use that version. So NVM use 14.18.1. And I will say, let's go ahead and install everything 
that we need. So I'll say npm install gult cli at 2.3.0 yeoman version 4 and the Microsoft SharePoint framework generator generator SharePoint at next. And we'll now let it go ahead and install everything that it needs for installing and working with the SharePoint framework version, well, whatever the beta version is that's available to us. All right, so now you can see that we've now created our SharePoint developer environment and it now supports SharePoint framework beta. In this case here, it's 1.14, uh, beta four of 1.14. So again, you know, I can come back, if I come over here and I do an NVM LS, we can see we've got a bunch of different versions of Node installed, and each one of them has a different version of the SharePoint framework set up. So right now you can see I'm on 14.18.1. If I did an npm, uh, npm list-g dash-depth equals zero, what we'll see here is that we're running uh, SharePoint framework, the beta version 1.14.0 beta 4. However, the version that we installed a minute ago on a previous, uh, in a previous video, we had 14.18.2. That was for the latest version of the SharePoint framework for SharePoint Online. And then you can see I've got two other ones set up here. One of these, uh, I think 18.17, that's for SharePoint 2019, SharePoint Server 2019 and SharePoint Server Subscription Edition. And 16.7, sorry, 6.17.1, that's for SharePoint Framework SharePoint Server 2016 Feature Pack 2 uh, to where we can create projects using SharePoint Framework 1.1. So here you can see we got one machine that is now set up to do SharePoint Framework development for all possible environments. If you got any questions about this, please feel free to leave a uh, comment uh, below the video or feel free to head over to the blog post uh, and you'll get a bunch that are all referenced in the show notes. Um, and you, to get a bunch of additional links and guidance and explanation on how everything is all set up. All these definitive guides that I did for the different on-prem versions, um, hoping they'll be very useful uh, for you. So with that, thanks a lot for watching.